Um, so really quickly, how many people here are here because they actually want to learn how to start a podcast? And they're, they're thinking about starting one for their school. Okay. Um, how many people are here because they already have a podcast? Cool. Okay. Um, so I think one of the major things you worry about when you are thinking of starting a podcast is, you know, how to get it onto iTunes. But in actuality, that's one of the easier things. I think the harder things are um, learning how to keep up with a regular production schedule and uh, maintaining a staff. So what happened, I'm going to share my personal experience really quick before I get into those uh, topics. So I started my podcast my sophomore year of high school. Um, I started it because I really loved you know, This American Life and pretty basic podcasts like that. And I had a story come to me that I was like, this would be great in a podcast format. So I tried it out, and I, I loved working with audio. And so I was like, I'm just going to get a staff of my friends together and you know, start working with audio more. Um, and then throughout the course of that year, I realized that mostly what I was doing was organizing a staff. I wasn't actually working with audio. But then the next year, you know, we did some bigger projects. We launched a website and put like a video episode together and uh, launched a regular production schedule. So we were releasing episodes every three weeks. So that was all, you know, it, there was a lot of milestones that we reached. But before we get into this at all, if you're, work, if you're thinking about going into working with audio, if you start like a podcast staff, what you might find, like I did, was that, you know, not everything you're going to be doing is actually audio production. You might be more into the organizational stuff, and it might take away from the production experience. All right, so um, so I'm going to get into both the technical stuff, like how to get it onto iTunes and how to you know get the right equipment, but I'm also going to go over the uh, production aspects. So really quickly, um, if anybody's in this room, they probably already know what a podcast is. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because I think podcasts are a very underrepresented uh, medium in the high school journalism. Thing. Like, there's a very close-knit community of yearbookers. Like, that's most of the people that are at this convention, I, I think. And, uh, but, you know, podcasts are very obscure. So it'd be nice to have, like, a network of all the podcasts that are, you know, in high school journalism. Okay, um, so before we get into the production stuff, uh, I want to go over the, really quickly, the technical stuff that you're probably worrying about the most. So um, getting your podcast onto iTunes, that process took me about, I would say two weeks maximum and I started it the second I finished my first episode like the second I finished editing it and um, I googled you know how to get a, podca a podcast onto iTunes and there's this thing called an RSS feed which iTunes makes you make because they want to release the podcast for free so they need you to pay for a website to host all of your files and the RSS feed is a very like complex coding thing and I don't really have that much authority over coding but um Basically, the way I went about doing it was I talked to my news website's programmer, and she did it for me. But you might be smarter than I was in my sophomore year, and you might be able to figure it out yourself. I would just um, s suggest Googling iTunes RSS feed, and that's how you can get it onto iTunes. But um, you know, while you have your podcast, every single time you release an episode, obviously you're going to put it onto iTunes. But I would suggest also putting it onto SoundCloud, YouTube, and uh, formats like that because... People, you want to give everybody an opportunity to listen. So if they don't have a you know easy to use podcast app, then they might rather do it on their computer with SoundCloud stuff like that. So just release it on as much as you can. So um, after you have all of your iTunes stuff situated, you're gonna want to look at equipment and editing. Um, audio editing is probably the best. It's way better than video editing because all the programs you need are absolutely free. And the free programs are basically the same as the really expensive programs, which is not the same for video editing. If you've edited a video, you know, the Windows Movie Maker is like child play and, you know, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro is a million times better. But basically, the, the Adobe program for audio editing is exactly the same, but it just looks fancier than Audacity. So when you start editing your podcasts, I would suggest, um, you know, Googling Audacity and it's a free download and it can download to Macs or PCs. And it's also very easy to use. So like a couple weeks ago, I was like, I need to find a sound effect that sounds like you're putting a speaker underwater. And so I just Googled Audacity, learn how to speaker underwater sound effect, like nothing coherent and, you know, a million examples of how I can do that. So Google is really helpful for learning how to edit audio and it's a very easy thing to learn. So after you have your editing and your iTunes worked out, um, there's, you know, the small problem with equipment. Uh, you can produce a... A full episode, uh, you know, that's very good with a iPhone mic, but um, there are some cheap recorders that, you know, make your quality a whole lot better. So I use the Zoom H6, which looks like this, uh, and I use it for interviews and narration. 
Um, and I mean, it's just a question of you know getting to know the equipment and stuff. And that's about I would say one hundred and fifty dollars. But if your journalism program has like a more flexible budget, the narration mic that This American Life uses is called the Shure KSM thirty two. And you know, if your journalism program has a budget and they want to start an audio program, you can ask them to invest in like a mic stand and a microphone. It'd be super cool, you know, like swivel around, and it'd be great for narration. Um, but yeah, so that's the basic equipment you might need. But I would suggest if you're starting out, just see how far you can get with that uh, with an iPhone mic. All right. <clears throat> oh, and this is my staff's equipment list that we first came up with. Not none of it's really that necessary, but you know. Uh, and also, you don't really have to take notes. I'm going to give you a link to this whole seminar at the end. But if you want to take notes, that's fine. Okay. So um, now that we're through, you know, all the technical stuff, I'm going to get to the production. So um, the six steps that I came up with while I was producing basically followed the general production plan of pre-production, production, and post and post-production. Um, but you know these are the six steps. I'm going to go through all of them really quickly. So uh, when you start the first step, which is theme selecting, uh, you're going to want to take into account what the overarching goal of your podcast is. So when you start your podcast, when you're going over the logistics of starting a staff and everything like that. You're going to want to think of like what is your podcast trying to accomplish. So what ours, what I wanted uh, mine to do was tell stories of teenagers in our community in a way that was interesting to other teenagers and also to other adults in the community. Like, and like the whole sales pitch for if we ever wanted to get a radio show or anything like that was like, oh, adults, you'll finally know, you know, what the teenagers are thinking about, which you know wasn't exactly it, but you know, it's it's a good lens to. So if you're in high school, you might want to have a broad theme of just you know telling interesting stories. Um, and then when you get to the step, you're just selecting themes that are going to elicit good stories that will help you uh, complete and reach your podcast ultimate goal. All right, after you've selected your theme, you can go on to planning. Um, my staffer, Regan Roy, was actually the first one to come up with this step. But basically, when you have your theme, you can start thinking about the people you're going to need to interview for that theme, like any experts. So we did an episode about entitlement, and uh, we were like, it'd be great to find a sociologist to interview and see, like, you know, how has uh, America's sense of entitlement changed over the years? Just thinking of people you're going to want to be able to interview. Um, and then also writing interview questions. And, uh, and then the most important part is writing the goals for the episodes because that's going to help you lace together. Because you don't want to make an episode that just goes everywhere and never reaches a final point. So when you have all these goals that you're starting out with, it helps you with every other step of the process. Okay. Uh, and this is the planning document from one of our most recent episodes. Uh, we did an episode called First Impressions, which was just sort of an experimental episode trying to find funny, interesting stories about you know teenagers' first impressions. Uh, and so when we were writing this planning, we wrote our goals under this main points thing, and then uh, we wrote a rough outline, which ended up being really helpful for editing and writing. Okay, after you have your planning, all your planning put together, you can start interviewing, which is actually my favorite process. But, um, you know, there are probably 50 seminars just on this trip that deal with interviewing. I don't know if that's the correct number. But, so I'm not going to go really in-depth into interviewing because everything you're learning at those seminars apply completely to podcasts. But a couple of things that are a little bit different is that um, when you're interviewing for podcasts, oh, and by the way, all of this relates to journalistic storytelling podcasts because a podcast can really be anything. So yeah, this is all stuff like This American Life, just journalistic storytelling podcasts that will be easy for you to learn how to do and also to integrate into your journalism program at your school. But um, when you're interviewing for these types of podcasts, you want to get stories rather than insights because insights aren't going to help you um, elicit emotion and they're not really going to help you lace together a story but stories actual like anecdotes will um if you've watched any of the interviews with um the guy who started humans in new york i'm embarrassed that i don't remember his name but um he uh he tells a great thing uh i forget how he said it but basically um like, everybody shares opinions, but nobody really shares a story. So if you want to tell a unique thing, go for a story rather than an opinion. And that, complies, uh, that, impl uh, that applies completely to podcasting. All right, so after you have all of your interviews, you want to take detailed notes on all of the interviews. So you're going to want to listen to the audio file and write, you know, at 
minute one in the interview with Sandra, she says something that is very interesting. It's a story, and it meets our goal of blank. And that will help you start editing all of the interviews together and assembling the full, uh, full podcast. And then once you've taken notes on all the interviews, you can start actually writing the script. So um, this is the body of our script for that First Impressions episode I was talking about. So it's pretty simple. Um, we just have the initial of whoever's narrating. So P is, that, that's me. And then K is uh, my producer, Kate Hatter. And uh, we just have all of the stuff we're saying. And then in brackets, we just have, you know, plug in this soundbite here. And this will help you narrate efficiently. And also it will really, really help you edit. If you start editing a story and you don't have a script, it puts so much things up to question, it just takes forever. Um, so yeah, just try to write your scripts out. And you can improvise some of the lines when you're actually narrating, but you know, you might, you might as well have everything scripted. Um, so when you get to narration, uh, if you know anything about podcasting, this is going to sound very cliche, but you know, your narration needs to be conversational. It's pretty obvious. Um, I like to think about it like uh, if you've listened to This American Life, you know, Ira is very conversational in that podcast, um, but it gets even more so when you listen to podcasts like Radio Lab because there's two hosts and you're actually, you know, they're literally having a conversation, so it's even more conversational. So um, basically, you just want to try to make your podcast informal. Uh, and it's going to take a very long time to develop, if you're going to be the host, it's going to take a very long time to develop an informal uh, way of speaking, because even if you think you're being conversational, it's, I mean, it's probably going to come off as a little uh, tense for a while, and I mean, it takes forever. But um, if, you're, if you're managing a podcast, not only will you be narrating, but you'll probably be directing other people's narration. Um, and there's a lot of thought that goes into that, especially if you're editing. So if you're editing, narrating, and also directing other people's narration that you're going to have to edit, you have to be thinking of, like, if somebody clears their throat, then that's going to be difficult to edit out, and it's going to be difficult to make it sound cohesive because you're going to edit out this cough, and then instead of somebody being like, we um, <clears throat> went to this church, it's going to be, we went to this church, like, it's not going to sound good. So um, this is an example of me, whoops, sorry. This is an example of me directing uh, that producer, Kate Hatter, while she was narrating, I think, an episode that hasn't been released yet. So this is behind the scenes. That was the refuge pastor, Mindy Watson, and a video with her husband. They started the church together when? Um, say something after when, uh, so that it feels like you're talking in a complete sense. Like when they... Okay, well, yeah, okay, yeah. Are you want me to start from the beginning, or? Uh, yeah, sure. That was the refuge pastor, Minnie Watson, in a video with her husband. They started the church together when God asked them. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. All right, so, like, it really did not matter what she said, so it doesn't matter that she sounded really foolish then, but, like, because we just wanted, basically, we were going to piece together that piece of narration with an interview so that it was one sentence but two people talking. So if she ended the sentence with when, it would be like, they started the church together when, and then the interview would start and it would sound ridiculous. But if she says something afterwards, it makes it a more cohesive cut. So you just want to be thinking about every step of the process while in each step. Um, okay, so after the narration stage, you're going to have a bunch of audio files, some of them narration and some of them interviewing, and you can start editing, which I think, aside from uh, interviewing, editing is probably my favorite uh, part of the process. I think Ira Glass said in some This American Life thing that editing is like very uh, cathartic. It like sends you into a trance. And I mean, if anybody's worked with video and audio, you probably agree with me. It's like very relaxing. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of things to think about when you're going over editing. I'm going to give you a link to a handout that actually has the process of, you know, like putting audio into a timeline, arranging the audio and putting music behind it and everything like that. But basic stuff about editing is um, you first are going to arrange the clips of interviews and narration that you need. So when you're recording narration, you're going to basically have one audio file that has all of your clips of narration and also you messing up. So you're going to have to listen through all of that and get all of the pieces you need. And then you're going to have to listen to all of the interviews, look back at your interview notes that you took, hopefully, and think, okay, I need to clip it here, here, have all of these clips and then you can arrange it in a timeline, so it's like narration, editing, or uh, interview, narration, interview, and that will also follow what your script looks like. I think I have an example of what the timeline looks like. 
Yeah, so this is um, what the Audacity version like looks like after the script I showed you. So I, I showed you a script from one of our episodes. This is what it ended up looking like. So in this first uh, track, we have all of the narration. So it was an interview with these two students who had very good first impressions of each other, but then like fell apart. And we were just cutting in between them talking. And then we have the music underneath. So um, a lot of episodes might have you know four tracks, like narration, interviews, music, sound effects, stuff like that. But basically, to give you a very general process, it goes from arranging the interviews and narration to putting music under it. And then it's an issue of timing, which is another thing that will take a long time to learn because you know it's just it's it's just an issue of getting used to the medium. Uh, so I guess a good example of a podcast that has very good editing uh, is 99% Invisible. Like, it's like, when you listen to that podcast, it's like, it sounds like you're just listening to a song that's like nine minutes long. It's very good. Um, but one more thing about editing, and then I'll wrap uh, this part of this up, is um, depending on what kind of podcast you want to have, you can do a lot of different things with editing. So if you listen to This American Life, most of the editing and effects they're doing are like fade-ins and fade-outs of music and, you know, like, it's basically all just music. Um, but if you listen to Radio Lab, it's like actual sound effects and, you know, like people will be interviewing and then their voices will like echo, 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 and like dissipate. And Radio Lab has very cool effects because they're a more creative podcast. But if This American Life tried to do some of the effects that Radio Lab did, it would sound ridiculous because it's just not their style. And it doesn't mean that, you know, the people who make This American Life are worse editors. It just means that, you know, they do things a specific way. And even though they could do those effects, it just wouldn't sound good. So when you're going into your podcast, you really want to think ahead to like, what do I want this whole body of work to be like? Like, how creative do I want this to be? Um, and then after editing, you'll have that full MP3 of an episode, which is a great feeling to have, you know, that final file. And you can start posting it and promoting it. Um, I already went over how to get stuff on iTunes. I can go over that again. I mean, it's pretty complex. Um, but so you're going to want to post it, you know, everywhere you think you'll get listeners and then promote it on any social media you have. So we post all of our episodes on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, our website, which is synapsepodcast.com, and then our school's news website, which is originally where we started, which is manualredeye.com. Um, and then you want to promote it on any social media you have. So this is what our iTunes feed looks like up on the left, I believe. Yep, the left. Um, and I mean, iTunes is just a really professional looking format that's easy to put together. If you look at our feed and we're, you know, a student run podcast with a super small staff that almost never meets to, you know, get stuff together. If you look at ours next to This American Life's iTunes feed, they look exactly the same. I mean, iTunes is a great format. So even though you can make a podcast and just post it on SoundCloud, I think iTunes is a good step to take to, you know, being very professional. And then I would just get a Twitter and a Facebook. They really don't have to be. You can do a thing with Twitter and just have all of your Facebook posts direct to Twitter. And I think you can also do it vice versa. So if you hate social media like I do, you can just do that. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's all the steps. So really quickly, I want to go over the styles of podcasts, in my opinion. So uh, since I started uh, my podcast, I started listening to more and more because, I mean, that's how you get better at something. You just, if you want to be a writer, you read a lot and write a lot. So, um, I think there are two styles of journalistic storytelling podcasts. There are direct and indirect. And direct is, you know, a quintessential example is This American Life because, you know, he literally says, this episode is going to be about blah, 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 we're going to hear from blah, 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 and then it's like clean music fade out and then start up back up again. It's, it's super easy to listen to. But if you listen to Radiolab, it's like, in one paragraph, eight different people may be talking, and it's like, Robert might be telling, saying a sentence, and then it cuts in with an interview, and you're like, oh, what was this, what was this? And it's like, it takes more brain power to listen to. So, um, I mean, I think both are really, really cool, but, you know, direct approaches are obviously easier to learn and, uh, and you know, put out uh, regularly, because, I mean... Radio Lab is a huge operation, but it also still doesn't put out episodes regularly. So, yeah, you just want to think about what you want your podcast to do. Um, I mean, there's obviously subsets to these approaches, like there's talk shows, uh, there's serial, but, I mean, serial is kind of a direct approach, I guess. Uh, yeah, and I have some excerpts that we can listen to if we have some time. Oh, I do have one example of something we did with editing, so um, 
like I said, we uh, our podcast is more of a direct approach. I mean, basically the only inspiration I had to when I started was This American Life. But uh, I like to try to do cool editing stuff whenever I can because, I mean, I love uh, that, that uh, stage in production. And so we had a radio show and we had to put together, you know, like kind of a cool intro. And if you've heard Radiolab, you, you will see that this, that was my main inspiration for this, I guess. But yeah, me and my staffer, uh, Reagan Roy, put this together. This is basically the only thing that we've done that's like creative editing. How many people do you have oh, about this? sorry, what? Um, so we have a staff of seven, I think. So it's me, I'm the executive producer, and then there's two senior producers, Olivia Millar and Reagan Roy, and then there's three producers, junior producers. And, um, but really everybody does the same thing because it's a small, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, if you were to, do you recommend having, like, a limit of people talking? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... I would decide on, I would spend like a week, like if you think you're like ready to start the podcast, I would spend a week before you release anything thinking, is this format going to sustain for a while? Because I mean, I didn't really think about anything when I started. And so I had to then change my name and change my logo. And it was just like this huge hassle. Um, but yeah, I would consider what, what ended up working for us with ha was having one narrator, like one host, and that was me. And then having secondary hosts that would narrate the stories that they did, if that makes sense. I mean, that's what This American Life does, you know, Ira hosts, and then each act might be narrated by whoever put that story together. And what's good about that is that the host, then, is narrating the most, and they are, they develop their style the most, but then the secondary producers can be a little more informal. If you listen to This American Life, um, I guess, like some earlier ones, Sarah Koenig might sound kind of way less informal than, more formal than uh, Ira Glass did, so... That's a good solution to, you know, making sure everybody's informal. What do you think, like, during, like, filming, like, do you think there should be more than, like, three people talking? Or um, I mean, well, here, I'm going to get more into, I'm going to go over, like, specific examples towards the end. So I'm going to play this clip really quick. Just remind me to get, yeah. One, two, three, check. Is there a quit? You are, yeah. You are. Listening to, to Synapse on RF M. Louisville. Goodbye, Reagan. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm Peter Chimpelli. I'm Reagan Roy. So the idea was that it was a live operation, so the idea was that that music would start playing and then I would manually put the level down and start narrating live so um i mean that if you look at that editing track it's like eight different tracks of you know like him talking and then him talking at a lower pitch like or oh, this is rig and roy and then you know like stuff like that echo effects and stuff and then a lot of time even just went into making sure that the music that first beat hit at the right time so i mean timing is a big thing in editing uh let me just see how much is left and then i'll get to these specific questions um yeah i guess that's it so uh, really quickly, I used to have some handouts, but I gave them all away yesterday. I'm sorry, but I would cop I would copy all of these links down. So the top link is the the small handout that applies very specifically to this presentation and has the steps for editing when you download Audacity, which is like importing tracks and then ends with exporting. So that's a good way to know like the very basics of editing. So I would copy that link down for the handout, and then this presentation, this PowerPoint, is also at that second link. And then I have a larger podcasting packet that I actually gave to my staff, and that's at that third link. And then the fourth link is probably the best presentation I've seen about interviewing. And I wish I could talk about interviewing more, but I don't really think, I mean, I think you guys can, you know, find like interviewing seminars and stuff because, you know, interviewing is a big part of uh, journalistic storytelling podcasts. So let me know when you guys have all of this down, and I'm going to go on because I have a couple other things. Is everybody good? All right. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm just going to leave this up here. So, um, all right, so who, who's, let's just go through really quick and what kind of podcasts are people thinking of starting? So you said you're thinking about having multiple people talking at a time. Are you thinking about, like, a talk show? Um, so I was just wondering, like, would it, like, be confusing to have more than two? Or, like, what, what's, like, a good amount of people to have so it, it like, flows nice? Like, um, I would say two is probably the 
best, but you can do more. Let me think of an example. There's a podcast called The Dinner Party Download that I think has multiple, but I mean, the first time I listened to Radiolab, it was, it took me not very long to figure out, okay, these are the hosts. But when I listened to The Dinner Party Download, I think I've listened to two episodes and I still don't know who's who. So, I mean, I would say that if you're going for like a This American Life or Radio Love type style, where it's going to be a lot of narration and editing and interviews and music all together, then one or two makes the most sense. But if it's going to be long pieces of narration and that's part of your style, like we have a podcast in our school called Sports Talk, which is obviously a sports talk show. Um, it's like four people talking, which is fine. So, you know, it's depending on, I mean, what do you want to talk about in your podcast? Um, Okay. But if you were to start, would it be like a storytelling thing? Okay, cool. So I would just see which one of you is the com- is most comfortable talking most, or which two of you is, and then just have the other one be the, you know, secondary. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Um, well, our first pod, our first episode was the reason I started it was because um, of that thing that happened in Kentucky where they overturned the ban that said if people, uh, that if uh, gay people got married in another state and then came back, they they lost their rights. That ban got overturned. So like that's how we started. So I mean, besides that first episode, the only things we've talked about are, I guess, Ferguson, uh, transgender issues, um, but it, it just it just depends on, you know, like, how uh, comfortable your journalism program is with your principal, so, I mean, it, are things rough with your principal? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I would guess I would just follow whatever your website does. Thank you. No problem. I'm pretty sure they won't. Um, they So when you get that RSS feed worked out, uh, and also, by the way, if anybody wants to email me after this, I will go way more in-depth in email about the iTunes process, but I, it's just too much to explain now, and I also don't know that much about it. But um, iTunes will check your podcast to make sure that it's not just dead air or anything with when you first submit your first episode. But I think besides that, they won't. And also there's explicit podcasts, but I'm not really sure how you'd make that like explicit tag, if that makes sense. But to answer your question, no, I don't think they do check. And I don't think they'd see it as a problem either. Yep. Um, so like I said, I use the, uh, the Zoom H6. By the way, did anybody come in after the slide about iTunes and equipment? Okay, I'll go over that one more time. So, um, well, I'll go over your question first. So I use the Zoom H6, which is about, uh, I would say, like $150 maybe. And I think that that's good for both interviewing and narrating. But um, yeah, I would use something like that. There's a really good um, old Olympus recorders that are like very old. I think they don't sell them anymore. But anyway, like anything kind of this size would be good for interviewing. And then also, if you need to, iPhone mics. I mean, I just I suggest that everybody, you know, if you're going to try it as a thing, I wouldn't invest too heavily into ed- into equipment. I would just try to see how far you can get with a regular cell phone mic. Um, and then anybody who came in after the iTunes slide, basically, uh, iTunes needs you to set up something called an RSS feed. That's just capital R S S. And uh, and the only reason they need that is because iTunes wants to offer the podcast for free, and so they need you to pay to host your own podcast. So instead of like submitting an episode to iTunes, they want you to have a feed that will constantly go through, which also makes it very easy because you're just going to be editing one line of code. Yeah. So um, uh, I can, like I said, if I have business cards up here, come get one at any time and email me, um, and I can give you way more information and send you like PDFs and stuff, like anything you need. Uh, but I would just 
starting off, I would Google RSS feed. This is what RS, RSS feed looks like. And um, I my snooze website's programmer hooked me up with a thing that lets me edit it on my desktop. But basically, you'll have item blocks for each episode, and then within that item block, like this is the most recent uh, or most recent released episode, sorry, that uh, that we have. So it's just you know a title and a summary, and then they have to have you display the actual duration and stuff. And then there's a link to where you're hosting the episode. So, I mean, there are millions of YouTube videos that will show you how to do this and stuff. And we'll do it in a way that will be much quicker than I could do it. So, uh, yeah. And again, email me if you want and I'll give you some stuff. Yep. I have a question about your production schedule. Can you tell us about how you, how you plan all this? Like, how long is the finished product and then how much time do you think goes into creating each one? Yeah. Um, so... We started a tri-weekly production schedule, so we were releasing every three weeks. Um, theme selecting and planning, you can do, were you here for all the steps of production? Uh, yes, I was. Okay, cool. Um, theme selecting and planning, you can do in about a day. Interviewing, I would say, takes the longest, uh, because you need to make sure you have good length interviews and you know, getting anecdotes and getting enough sources so that you have like an expert and stuff. Um, I, I usually, if I had to give like actual time ranges on it, I would say interviewing and planning in a day. Or no, no, I'm sorry. Theme selecting and planning in a day. Interviewing about a week, a couple days to write and record narration, and then a couple days to edit. Editing is something that's like, I, like I said, it's very cathartic and it feels, it's like when you start, it's like you can just sit there for five hours and edit and it feels great. But it also takes a lot of time to make yourself edit when you know it's going to be a big project. So, yeah. Um, Three weeks, I would say, is enough to put together like a ten-minute episode. But it also depends on what, how much other responsibilities. So, are you thinking of starting a podcast that you'd be advising? Yes. Okay, cool. So, um, would it be a part of school, so that meeting during class time? No, it would be both. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and how many people would be joining? That's what I'm waiting to see. All right. <laughs> Sorry, um, this is a bit uh, kind of proposed. So, if you want to do like a ratio thing, just think. Ours is six people, and we can do 10 minutes every three weeks. So if you have 12 people, you might be able to do 10 minutes every one and a half weeks. Yeah. So um, that's basically how ours runs. Is there any other questions? It's really okay, thank you. Um, all right. Let me see if there's anything else I can go over. So the links that I gave you, did everybody get those copied down? Raise your hand if you want me to go back. OK. Um, yell at me if I didn't see you. Raise your hand. Uh, so I mean, these are the things that those are links to. There's just the basics, it has all the steps here, and then there's the process of editing, which is uh, you know, a piece by piece thing. And then um, I have this longer podcasting pa uh, packet, which I put together, I think, at the beginning of this year. Um, yeah. So, you know, these are just really in depth versions of the steps that I was talking about today. Did anybody, does everybody feel like if they wanted to start a podcast tomorrow, they'd roughly know? how to, like, what steps they should take. Raise your hand if you don't, because I can probably answer any clarifications you need. All right, cool. That makes me feel good about myself. All right. Um, uh, like, like I said, again, to see all of this, copy that second Google short link. Yeah, all right. And if you need business cards, if you want to email me, that's up here. All right, thank you.